<coughs> and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss your chance on winning a set of ProLine BF Goodreach crawler ties. Leave me a comment, guys. Tell me why you need them. Are you building a new rig? Have you got an old rig with old gnarly tires? I don't mind. Send me a comment and I'll put you guys in the final draw. Now let's get back into today's video. Hey guys, on this week's show, we're going to relocate the steering servo. Why do you ask? Oh, I can give you two reasons. My main reason is because last week we changed the front suspension and added a flex kit to it. The steering servo arm kind of sits at a quite a high angle whereby the panhard rod went down because of how it was reconnected. There's a lower connection on the actual flex kit, but the steering servo arm sits a little bit at an angle. So I want to actually reduce that by going forward and seeing that the chassis kind of bends down in the front. That gives me exactly the right height to kind of get that steering arm a little bit lower. And the second reason would be once you've actually removed the servo, to the front you have a bit of space to actually place a small battery so as you can see i have this weight box in here i'm going to quickly take it out and that is going to be the new position of the servo let's slide this out and now you can see the steep angle that the server arm is running at. Now, obviously, if I have a bit of a compressed suspension, that angle does change. So by setting this bracket in front here, going forward, the chassis actually lowers down. So I'm going to remove this bracket and install it in the front section of the chassis. So looking at the car from this angle, you can see that the steering link is lined up perfectly. That is not going to change at all. I'm going to relocate the steering servo to the front by only flipping the steering horn around, not changing the actual angle of the steering link at all, just lowering the angle of the steering link just a touch. So first step is to remove the servo. That's not the right size. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Much better. You guys have probably noticed that I'm still running the stock servo, seeing that I have not had any issues with the stock servo. And, you know, this channel is about keeping the car in a budget, keeping everything as stock as possible. And that's why, seeing that it didn't break, I haven't changed it yet. Not that you guys can see much. Let's take the link off, put the screw on the side, turn the car around again. I'm just opening the receiver box quickly because I do not have enough length on the steering servo cable. So now I can just pull a little bit. Get a little bit more freedom in the front. So the idea is to just swing the servo horn around. So seeing that it was in this position and now it will move forward, the servo horn has to look out the other way. I'm going to, oh, hang on. Wrong one again. I don't know how many times I'm going to do this today. <laughs> okay, hope this one fits. And, okay, and it does fit. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the horn off and flip it around. So let's turn the vehicle on. My steering is not in the center, so I'm going to center my steering. And then I'm going to put the server arm or server horn on as far in the center as I can actually get it. It 
is either that way or that way. I think I'm going to just run it this way. Placing the servo here so that the position of the actual arm does not change forward or backwards. So the servo kind of needs to sit in this position. And let's put that bolt back before we forget it. We obviously have to put the bolt back because we will forget about it. There we go. Not too tight. After very tight, comes very, very loose. <laughs> now I can put the receiver box back together, seeing that I have enough cable now. So the server position used to be here, which gives me a height to the arm of exactly, let me just position this and measure that. It was exactly 1.4. So the lower part of the servo arm was 1.4 from the top of this rail. That would put the servo link in this angle. Now, with the servo moving down the front of the chassis, from up here, probably to about here, I've measured 2.6. So let's swing it to 2.6, position it over here, put the link in that area, and see if we have, when we have a full compression on the axle, if we actually have space before this link actually hits the bottom link. We don't want them to mangle each other up. So compressing the axle here, let me do this other way. I'm gonna do this without the stand. Take the stand off. Place, it on it. Place the car on its wheels. Now I can compress the axle and see where my link would actually sit. That seems to be, hang on, hang on, about there. That just gives me enough space to still be steering under full compression. So under full compression, that also is not mangling up the links with each other. So I've decided to 3D print a new servo mount because I actually do not want to damage the original and the original also keeps the chassis together and lined up. So I've gone ahead and 3D printed myself a second servo mount. So now this is the position of the servo and the distance that the servo horn sits at is exactly at 0.8 eight millimeters. Now swinging this around, I need the servo horn to sit in the same position. Let me just move the car a little bit and you can see that the servo horn, it, cable's a bit in the way there, the servo horn sits approximately the same distance as before. So we have not manipulated the distance that the servo horn center sits at. That is at the same center so that the link, the steering link still joins up to the same position. Just that it's a little bit lower in this case. Okay, let me just tighten up the new servo plate. Okay, the plate is in its position and these 3D printed parts are seriously a lot stiffer. That's just showing that the flexibility on the original plastics over here, there is a lot of flex in it whereby the 3D printed stuff is really as hard as nails. So from a flex point of view, we don't really have a lot of twist or anything like that mounting the server onto a 3D printed plate. So I'm quickly going to just tighten up the servo. And obviously I'm doing the last bit by hand because you do not have a lot of feeling in the machine. No, 
let's turn the car around. And obviously that's the wrong one. We can change it to a different size. Before we forget, we're actually going to place the screw in for the servo. That's looking quite good. Let's test it under full compression. The car now is under full compression and you can just see that steering arm miss the steering linkage by a couple of millimeters, let's say two, one and a half to two millimeters or maybe even less on that side. It almost looks like it's touching. Let me just lower the camera a little bit. And as you see it just misses the linkages by it's a millimeter let's say or a little bit more <laughs> but anyway it's not binding up under full compression and once you raise it you don't have that now let me just lift the car up out of its suspension lifting the tires up now this would be the maximum droop now you can see that the angle of the panard rod or the track bar is not as much as it used to be. So once we added the flex kit that allows lower droop on the front axle and also putting the pan hot rod or the track bar in about a centimeter lower than its original position gives you a better angle on the pan hot rod or track bar, but then the steering linkage is at a very high angle. So once you do fit something like that to get more droop or more travel flexibility out of your axle or front axle you might just want to look at swapping your servo over and dropping it into the front section of the chassis so everything is installed the 3d printed part is as tough as nails there is no flex in the servo at all as you can see the original servo plate is still in its position because it's actually holding the chassis together at that point. Now check out my video from last week. I'll put a link down in the description where I fit the flex kit to the TRX4, allowing more articulation on the front axle and also more droop because we dropped the position of the shock absorber down by one centimeter. And also we dropped the position of the pan hard rod or the track bar from its original position down to about one centimeter as well so that leaving the steering link with a higher angle we drop the servo from its original height to a lower height automatically we obviously put it from here to the front and what does that give us guys that allows me to actually take out my full-size battery if you are running a full-size battery and you don't really want to purchase a smaller battery to put in front here, by moving the servo from here it gives you the space to actually fit a full-size battery in. So what we can do, we can take our full-size battery and slide it into its new position. Now that is perfect because I've actually just lost my weight box, so I do need to replace the weight with the battery. And in case you're wondering, there is still a little bit of space in between the motor and the battery. So it looks like my suspension is traveling freely. My steering is running freely. No problems with that. So quick explanation. Last week we fitted a flex kit to the front axle of the TRX4, giving it more articulation and more droop on the front axle. By fitting the flex kit, the shock absorber dropped by one centimeter and the pan hard rod or also the track bar was moved down by one centimeter. 
only thing that was left was the steering link was still in its stock position. So by leaving the steering link in its stock position, it just had a very high angle. So by moving the servo forward and downwards, you're reducing that angle of the steering link and lining it up to the pan hot rod or the track bar. And to top it all off, we can now take our full size battery out of its original tray and place it in the front where the stock server used to sit. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you be better out on the trail than everybody else, because that's actually why we do all of this stuff. <laughs> so that we can outperform everybody out the window, I mean out the door. So that's it for me this week, guys. Thanks for watching. Click that notification bell, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss your chance on winning the Proline tires. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.